abduction is the primary mode of heat transfer. Through solids. So it is heat transfer. to the transfer of vibrational kinetic energy. Of the molecules of a solid. So for example, We have a metallic rod and what we are doing is we are insulating it from outside. So the outer surface is insulated like this. So there's some kind of insulating layer here, but this end of the rod is kept in a steam chamber. So that is at 100 degrees C. And this other end of the rod is kept in contact with ice. At zero degrees. Then what we will observe is that there will be heat transfer that occurs in this direction through the rod actually. So better we show that heat transfer happening through the rod. So heat as a form of energy, in this case, vibrational kinetic energy will conduct from the hotter end to the colder end like this. And this mode of heat transfer through the vibrational kinetic energy of the molecules of the solid, this mode of heat transfer is called conduction. Just make note of this. Yeah, Sarvesh, 
molecules of any solid material cannot move about because of the strong intermolecular attractive forces or the intermolecular bonds but they are vibrating by virtue of their heat energy so that is called the vibrational kinetic energy the kinetic energy with which the molecules are vibrating that is called the vibrational kinetic energy Okay, now next. Yeah, the definition of conduction is written above service. Just note it down. Okay. It is a mode of heat transfer through solids okay, where the heat transfer is taking place through vibrational kinetic energy of solid molecules. This definition you can just note it down if you want. Okay. Okay, so once again, let's look at some properties of heat conduction. So if the outer surface is insulated so that there is no heat loss from the surface but there's only conduction of heat from the through the length okay. 
So the two ends. If the two ends of a heat conductor, for example, the metallic rod above. Okay. So the two ends are maintained. at different temperatures one end at a constant temperature p1 of a heat source So we maintain them at constant temperature T1 and T2 such that T1 is greater than T2. Then at steady state the rate of heat conduction delta q by delta t is directly proportional to the temperature difference directly proportional to the area of the rod and inversely proportional to the length Now the constant of proportionality for this equation this constant of proportionality k it is called the thermal conductivity It is a property of the material of the rod. Okay. Higher the value of K, better the rate of conduction. Yeah, we'll discuss about that, right? Let's make a note of this equation first. So we'll discuss about steady state.
but before that let's understand the units so this is the rate of heat conduction in joules per second or watts this is of course cross sectional area in meter square an si unit that is this is temperature difference between the two ends kelvins so k thermal conductivity is expressed in watts per meter kelvin or joules per meter second kelvin Okay, now let's understand what is steady state. Yeah, service plastic also conducts heat, but the rate of heat transfer is very poor compared to metal. Plastic also conducts heat. not that it does not conduct but rate of heat transfer is poorer compared to metals because the thermal conductivity is less okay now let's understand what is steady state it is the
स्टेट ऑफ द कंडक्टर वेन द रेट ऑफ हीट कंडक्शन इज यूनिफॉर्म एट एनी क्रॉस सेक्शन चल एक्सप्लेन इन मोर डिटेल वॉट दिस मीन्स बट फर्स्ट नोट डाउन दिस
okay so let's understand in more detail about steady state so what happens is like initially suppose our rod was at room temperature a metallic rod is initially at room temperature 27 degrees c so any point on the rod all these points are at 27 degrees okay but now suppose we place the rod in that situation just a minute people i'll be right back yeah so coming back to this example now suppose we have kept this rod we have put this end into a steam chamber so so t1 is at 100 degree c okay and we have kept the other end in an ice bath at t2 equal to 0 degree c and we have insulated this from the outside and all that so there is some insulation now we start observing the temperature at few different places like the temperature at this point temperature at this point the temperature at this point and the temperature at this point so what we will observe is that from the initial state where the temperature at all these points was equal to room temperature okay we start changing rapidly 
at first. Okay, that is T1 and T2 increase. compared to T0 is equal to 27 degrees C, okay? And T3 and T4, because they are closer to the ice bath, decrease okay, with respect to T0 equal to 27 degrees. Okay, such that after sufficient time, these temperatures stabilize. Like if we are continuously measuring the temperature at various different points. So what we'll see is after a sufficiently long time, these temperatures stabilize. T1 will become almost equal to 100 degrees C. T2 will be less than T1. T3 will be less than T2 and T4 will be less than T3 and T4 will be almost equal to zero degrees because it's the temperature of the point almost in contact with the ice bath. So when this happens, we say that the rod has reached steady state. When the temperature stabilizes, then the rod has reached the steady state. Okay, so just make a note of this first and we'll discuss more about steady state. Because it is closer to the ice bath, which is at zero degrees. Okay. So some of the points in the rod, their temperature is going to decrease in comparison to 27 degrees C. And the reason for that is heat transfer only. Because heat is transferring from those points towards the ice bath, which is at a colder temperature. So their temperature decreases. Whereas some of the points in the rod, which are on the left hand side of the rod, their temperature will increase in comparison to 27. Because they are closer to the 100 degrees C end. So heat is conducting from them at a more rapid red rate from the 100 degree C. If we do, do this experiment, this is actually what we will observe. No, I'll explain that how it is uniform. Okay. So when these temperatures stabilize at various different points, we say steady state has been reached.
so what is happening here is that we maintain this end at 100 degrees c we maintain this end at 0 degrees c okay now we are observing a small cross section here and we see that the temperature t1 or t2 or whatever now t2 was initially 27 degrees c okay and now it starts increasing so while it is increasing the rate of heat transfer that is coming from this side is more than the rate of heat going out from it from this side So that means the rod does not have uniform rate of conduction. So it is not in steady state. Okay. But after some time, T1 becomes constant. Suppose T1 becomes constant at 75 degrees C. Suppose I'm saying. Okay. So at that point of time, what is happening? For that small set of molecules, this temperature, sorry, T2 becomes stable. Okay. So the moment this happens, that that point of time delta q1 by delta t is equal to delta q2 by delta t okay so the conduction rate is uniform and from cross section to cross section this is true for all points so steady state has been reached Because the temperature is increasing the somewhere. So the rate at which heat is coming into this small section, which has a temperature T2, is larger than the rate at which heat is going out. We are observing on the thermometer that the temperature T2 is increasing from 27 onwards now. So more heat is coming into it than the heat going out from it. But eventually we observe that the temperature shows us, uh, the thermometer shows a stable value of T2. So when that happens, that T2 is greater than room temperature, but it's become constant in time. Now. So that small cylinder of heat uh, of metal, the shaded portion that I've shown, that small section, it's not gaining heat anymore. Its temperature is stabilized. But at the same time, we know conduction is happening through the rod because the two ends of the rod are at different temperatures. So if conduction is happening, but still the temperature at every point has become stable, that means at any point the incoming heat is equal to the outgoing heat. The incoming rate of heat flow is equal to the outgoing rate of heat flow. So that means there must be a uniform heat current or uniform rate of conduction throughout the rod. That is the concept of steady flow, steady state.
okay so that is suppose let t2 is equal to 75 degrees c okay so what happens is that steady state is the state when the temperature at all points in the heat conductor the temperatures have stabilized okay. and that implies that there is a uniform rate of conduction and that uniform rate of conduction delta q by delta t is given by this formula Aresi, Sarvesh, what is happening? We are considering this small cylinder of metal here of thickness dx. Now, its temperature T2. Hai. Now, suppose T... So, what is happening? This temperature at this end is 100 degrees C. The temperature at this end is 0 degrees C. Okay. So, we know that heat is coming in from this side because this is hotter. We know that heat is going out from this side because that side is colder. But if T2 agar increase, kar hai, that means incoming heat is more than outgoing heat. Se. So when T2 is increasing, the rate of incoming heat that has to be greater than the rate of outflow of heat. Na? Otherwise, how its temperature will increase? Just a simple logical thing. Now, the other important point is that at steady state,
the temperature gradient is uniform i'll come back to this point but before this now let us uh, look at one more thing i don't want to confuse the variables here so instead of t1 and t2 because t2 i have already taken as the temperature of the point inside the rod over here so i will take this end of the rod's temperature as ta I'll take this end of the rod's temperature as Tb and the length of the rod is L. Okay. So we will write this as Ta minus Tb, the temperature difference between the ends of the rod instead of T1 minus T2, which I had taken as okay, where Ta and Tb are the temperatures at the two ends of the conductor. Okay, so just make a note of this point here. Okay, so now let's understand what we mean by this fact that the temperature gradient is uniform. So if the temperatures at the two ends of the rod are Ta and Tb and the length of the rod is L. Now inside the rod, let's say the temperature T A is greater than T B. So heat flow is happening in this direction. Okay. Now inside the rod, let's take two arbitrary points which have temperatures T and T plus delta T because this point is closer to the end having higher temperature. So it will be at higher temperature itself. And the distance between these two points is let us say delta x. Okay. So temperature gradient is uniform means that delta t by delta x, the temperature difference between two points which are at delta x distance will be equal to the temperature difference between the two ends divided by L. Okay. So this is me the meaning of the statement that there is a uniform temperature gradient. Okay. Delta T is the temperature difference between 
any two points inside the rod at delta x distance okay along its axis so delta t by delta x is called the temperature gradient so at steady state this temperature gradient becomes uniform is the same for any two points so that's another property of steady state that we observe so these are the two important properties about steady state one is the uniform rate of heat transfer which is this and the other is that there is a uniform temperature gradient which is given by this so let's understand all this with an example so we have this metal rod which has a length of 5 meters a cross sectional area of let us say 10 cm square okay and the metal has a thermal conductivity of let us say 2 into 10 days per 3 watts per meter kelvin now the end a of the rod temperature at the end is maintained at let us say 200 degree c and the temperature at the end b is maintained at 
माइनस फिफ्टी डिग्री सी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फाइंड द रेट ऑफ हीट कंडक्शन एट स्टडी स्टेट एंड सेकेंडली फाइंड द टेम्परेचर एट अ पॉइंट पी इन साइड द रॉड एट एक्स इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट फाइव मीटर्स फ्रॉम द एंड ए
okay very good let's complete the calculation so first part we'll see delta q by delta t is given by the simple formula yes okay area we have to substitute in si unit so So this area when we convert to SI unit from this okay. and pressure difference will be this in Kelvins. So 100 watts or joule per second. That is the rate of heat conduction. So very good. Your answer is correct. Okay, now let's look at the temperature of that point. So if this point's temperature, we want to find out. But we know the end A is at a temperature 200 degrees C. The end B is at a temperature of minus 50 degrees C. We know the length of this rod is 5 meters. But this distance, so we take this as delta X. This distance is given to us as 1.5 meters. Okay. So we'll use for the second part, we'll use the formula this one okay so temperature at a minus temperature at p divided by 1.5 meters to be equal to temperature at a minus temperature at b divided by 5 meters so 200 minus this unknown temperature So it is 125 degrees. Okay. Or we could also use the fact that this side, the difference in length, let's say delta x prime is 3.5 meters. So we could also use the fact that
generally we could apply this. Okay, so people uh, today will conclude the lecture a little early because of an urgent uh, appointment that I have. Okay, so we will conclude today's lecture here and we'll next time continue with more about heat conduction. So this week, please continue and complete the problems of heat and thermodynamics up to first law application and heat engines and refrigeration cycles. Okay. So those are the chapters. Um, before the heat transfer section starts in your uh, module. So try to complete exercises from these chapters. Okay. So that next week onwards, we can concentrate on heat transfer. Okay. So that will be all for today's session because uh, as I told you, I have an urgent appointment to attend. Okay. So we will conclude from, uh, we will continue from this point in the next lecture.